Gabby Dagnes, Dagnes. I have to say that. The I love how you pronounce it. Dagnes. <laughs> uh, so we, hi, Eric, by the way, I love you. And thank you for working for me all day with me all day today. He says, hi, mom. He says, you've been talking a lot lately. <laughs> have you been talking to him a lot? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I am trying to do my healing and I just go on and I talk to myself. I'm talking way too much. At least I shut up. You're talking too much. Just, just do, do contribute your part of the healing and shut the F up. You're in blah, 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 blah. no. So yeah, that's probably what it's doing. All right. So we're, uh, we're going to get Waylon Jenny's total surprise to poor Abby here. We didn't know what we were going to do. So I said, well, we're going to do a Waylon Jennings because he's been a lot of people have been asking for him. Hi, Waylon. How are you? Are you here? He's here. He's actually really comfortable. He's very oh. handsome right now. Oh, <laughs> like, I, I'm actually kind of blushing a little. He's pretty darn handsome. He's yeah. like, yeah, he's he's got this whole like 70s motif going right now with these oh, cowboy boots and jeans and oh I'm my. Like. <laughs> I don't have any, but I know that my son Lucas is kind of a big fan of that and, and other country. He's got a very wide repertoire of he likes Ella Fitzgerald. He likes, you know, he just likes a so many. I'm pretty sure that he must have been friends with Johnny Cash because he's here too right now with him. Oh, hi, Johnny. He says, hello. Love your voice. <laughs> so All right, thank you also, um, Eric, for showing them in. If you had anything to do with that, you probably did. So he yeah. says, what? Well, of course I brought them in. He goes, these guys, they're amazing. Of course. He he actually is pretty excited to have them here. Um, musically, they're just so. He Eric's telling me how musically they are so inclined as guitarists and musicians. He says these guys invented. Um, he says country for, to its core, and he says they had a lot to do with um, the genre nowadays of like the whole rock country kind of like collabo he says um these guys were the original creators and i just got spirit bumps so they're all pretty excited that i'm yeah. sharing that right now <laughs> right so um these are questions from people of course they're not from bugs but anyway i know you were sick in your later years waylon jennings were you expecting to pass i didn't i don't know anything about you sorry He expected to pass a long time before that. He says um, his, okay. He says his whole life, he was just waiting to die. Oh no. But not in a oh, morbid what? way, not, not in a morbid way, not in a way of like, he says that he knew it was coming for him. Um, like death, he's showing me like um, a storm, like chasing him, like a storm was chasing him. And he's showing me this like beautiful scene, like of, uh, horses these stallions like galloping through this huge thunderclap clouds like over this beautiful like prairie lands and he's showing me he's showing me that and he was showing me it was always coming for me it was always coming for me but oh, never it, it didn't that? scare him it when, wasn't like yeah when did you realize that though ever since he was a little kid he's he's so always realized that a big uh exit point then for you he okay. says exit points are an understatement <laughs> okay so it was a big one all right uh, what was it like <gasps> in major training? you know what i just realized what? no 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 i knew this but i forgot i knew this and i was wondering why he was like showing me like thunderclaps and i'm hearing like a plane and then it just hit me that i knew this and i forgot i knew this about him he was supposed to be in the plane with Ricky Valance. Really? He gave up his seat for, I think, I don't know if it was the big bopper. Oh, I forgot I knew that. <laughs> feel about that. What did that do to you? Did you get survive, have survivor skills or anything? Or you're like, um, I thought it wasn't me. Were you like that? He says it was a chance. It was an era. It was a, um, good judgment bad judgment poor judgment um it was a, a glimpse of my life at that time and what could have how it could have tragically gone um but not so tragic because it was just meant to be how it was meant to be yeah. he 
um did you suffer a lot of guilt from that or not he had a, he had a hard time with Pat. I mean, on a human level. I mean, it, okay. it was just such a close call. Apparently, he had a lot of close calls. So that was not the only one of them, but they were people that he knew, you know, in the music industry itself. He's like showing me an image about back then what it used to be like. Um, it it there was much more. He says camaraderie, and once again, Johnny Cash is piping up with yeah, like yeah. he's agreeing with. There was just more camaraderie with not just separate genres of music but music in general oh. um that they the support system was just a little different uh i don't know why but all of a sudden jim morrison is showing up here too which is weird i don't i don't know if they were friends or something they agree, maybe the <laughs> same soul family maybe to try to he uh, says it's out of respect oh it's out of respect um some of these musicians must have crossed paths during the yeah. time and maybe he was friends with Jim Morrison too. I have no clue. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, right, so, um, well, you and Johnny Cash had very similar lives. You even had heart surgery at the same time. Did you plan to come down together? He, they're saying that they were brothers. Um, what do you mean? Like in another life or soul yeah family. in other what lives but like as in they were meant to cross paths and go through similar obstacles and experiences and be able to rely on each other yeah they must have been pretty good friends um i mean i would just like humanly guess that they probably knew each other but i would think they'd be more competitive because aren't weren't they the same kind of music um, but I guess not. They really just supported each other and were just psyched every time they got to play together and run in together. And it was not at all. I mean, it was like a friendly competition, but it wasn't like anything. It, they just had a great old time together, he says. So, tell um, about your childhood, though. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have a lot of questions covering 30 minutes. Okay, what was that? I'm sorry. Uh, what was your childhood like, Mr. Jennings? Poor but supportive. Oh, okay, good. What about your religion? His dad was just a working dad. Okay. What about like your just beliefs? I'm gonna look up something while you answer that. Well, he's saying to me a lot like you. So I don't know if that's me or if that means you, because you were brought up atheist. I was brought up Baptist. So yeah, he's saying was, a lot I, like you. I, I wasn't ever atheist. Oh no. Okay. But I was brought up by atheists. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it was more the Baptist. I think it was definitely a heavy, he's saying a heavy Christian. Okay. Heavy Christian background. So how did that affect you? He says, well, it definitely gave me some discipline when I needed it. It gave me a belief system when I needed it. It gave me my values when I needed it. Um, and it helped me talk out. It helped talk me out a lot of fun when I really needed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you little troublemaker over here. Sounds like it. Most country musicians are. He's okay. bringing up Willie Nelson right now. Oh, I love Willie Nelson. You know, he lost a child. And I saw an interview. Um, of He's. Him. And saying yes he did. To talk about that he just said no i'm not going to go there so i know willie i'll pay for he it. says it's he says it still hurts willie oh yeah god it'll always i'll always be broken you know yeah. all right so uh, here's another one okay so what was it like when you made your transition can you tell me what your transition was like he says beautiful eclectic inspiring well, terrifying take us through. <laughs> take us through emotions sights everything okay so at the point of crossing over um first off he recognized he's bringing up this hound dog that he used to have oh. and um this hound dog like he'd wake up in the morning in life and the hound dog would be over his face like rah, 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 oh. feed me feed me you know so he kind of just came to like that and the hound dog was over his face. Oh, um, sweet. And then in the background, he could hear the voice of his grandmother. Oh. 
um, like he was at, I'm getting spirit bumps, so he's pretty excited I'm sharing this. Um, he could hear the voice of his grandmother in the kitchen. Oh. He says, make him breakfast. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he used to spend nights at his grandmother's or just maybe she was just comforting for him. Um, but yeah, so he was listening to his grandmother in the kitchen cooking and humming. Um, and he, he woke up just like he would when he was a kid and is bad and comfortable. Um, he says, and happy. He says, I was at peace. There was no real question about what was going on. He says, because I was just so dang grateful that I could live the whole effing life I used to live. Yeah. Um, because there were a lot of times that he could have had an exit point yeah. and he didn't. Yeah. So he says he was just glad he made it that far. Um, he says it was awe inspiring because the colors, he's bringing up the colors, the light, how the light was so beautiful and electric and magnetic all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you just can't even really explain it. <laughs> That's I'm getting like, I think he must be, I don't really know where he's from, but I'm guessing country music, maybe from the South. Cause I feel like I'm like starting to speak in an accent. Like he, if he spoke in an accent, uh, y'all, you'll have to ask. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I want to like talk like in a, in like a Southern twang. Did you, was it a surprise to your transition? Was there anything that shocked you? Like, wait a minute. That's not what people. He says, about. if you live the life that I lived. He oh. says, I'm, he says, I'm the real gambling man over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> but did you, were you shocked? Like, wow, uh, this is not what the Baptist church taught me or whatever. I mean, was there anything shocking about your transition? Uh, not really. It, it really wasn't shocking. Just, it, it just more, um, he says he felt more grateful yeah uh grateful he got to just live as long as he did and meet who he did oh it was like he was just really in the moment you know like right when he crossed um so there was nothing chaotic and that's what he appreciated about the crossing was there was nothing chaotic about it Good. it was just very peaceful and a very easy transition um yeah. he says I know people didn't want to let me go he says heck I didn't want to let me go my whole life I had been fighting fighting the storm but, um, mind you, yeah. but I got to have my time he's bringing up a ranch um I think he has a ranch on the other side <laughs> also I want one he, really, he likes horses <laughs> I do uh, he just lives a simple life and he likes it that way. Yeah. He says a lot like Kenny. So I think he's referring to Kenny Rogers who also crossed. I remember last year. So, wow. All right. They so must know each other on the other side too. <laughs> I'm sure. All right. So we'll talk about your beliefs, uh, with, uh, some of these other questions from blog members, your good buddy, Willie Nelson has some spiritual beliefs you thought were pretty far out. What is your perspective from where you are now? And I bet the spiritual. Uh, beliefs came evolved from the death of his son i bet i don't know but maybe maybe you can share mm. that he says this is where there's misconception that can come okay. in in judgment because actually i feel like there's some native american influences with him a lot oh um because he's bringing up like sm well smoking but like um like the huts like where they smoke and then they have like these experiences yeah and those those are native american like you know foundations and beliefs of experiencing spirit and it seems like that was something that him and willie nelson like really had in common was that they had this foundation together that they actually and i like i feel like he had it before is the feeling he's giving me um like that was kind of like actually pretty important i wonder if he had any indian in him or something because i'm feeling the strong like 
Indian well, we'll influence. Now. I'm going to ask him more about that later. But yeah. Uh, okay. So your old buddy, Willie Nelson, has some crazy ideas about karma, or at least you thought they were crazy. Was he closer than you thought in his ideas about karma? Or, you know, did you even think that was crazy? I don't know. He says Willie Nelson's all around crazy, but you can't like the man unless you think he's crazy. You got to be crazy yourself. <laughs> yeah, I love Willie. Oh. He's as crazy as a matter of perspective. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, they thought that people were crazy to believe the world was round. So, you know, who's crazy now? Mm. All right. So, but um, do you, what do you think about Willie Nelson's beliefs now? that you have transitioned. He says he thinks that Willie's got to do what Willie's got to do. No, what do you think about his beliefs? That's the point. Willie, Willie's got to do what Willie's got to do with his beliefs. Like he's no, going to believe what he's going to believe. Was he spot on on some of them when you thought maybe he wasn't before, before you died? I mean, about karma, his spiritual beliefs. Did you think, did you go there and say, wow, Willie was really right about these things when I didn't think he was. I think that's what the blog member's asking. Yes, in a lot of ways, Willie was correct. Okay. Okay, when it comes to um, his beliefs about the spirit and what happens with the spirit body oh. and what happens after you transition and how and how you're there and how you help other people and how you see things through, he says. Okay. Um, so maybe that's what he means by karma, seeing things through. Oh, cool. He said that a lot of it is dead on, Willie. A lot of it's dead on. Okay. He's talking uh, directly to him right now, too. He oh, says a lot of it's dead on. Watches this, probably won't. But uh, yeah. anybody knows Willie, give him a heads up. Give my fellow Texan, please. All right. So uh, here's some other things that, um, you know, that are sort of related. Were the drugs and the hard times part of your life plan? And if so, why? And this is, wait, this is kind of the same. As talented as you were, you were equally self-destructive. Did that have anything to do with your pre-birth plan? So kind of the same question. So let's lump it all together. He says, sure was. Yeah. Sure was. Why? We learned something? He said, sure was, ma'am. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. teach, learn both and what a lot of it was to give him inspiration Oh, for being able to do what he does. He says he needed contrast, um, to be able to understand the different densities of life. Mm. He believes in the heart and that's something he'll always believe in. And that's something he wanted to have come out through his music. That's why he chose country. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you have to have a little wine, a little hard life. Hard I'm not going to lie. He's, I mean, you know, he's, he's, <laughs> he's making me blush when he looks at me. I'm like, hey. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, it's what you're saying is like, okay, you have to struggle in order to sing about the things that people who are listening to your songs want to understand have, have an understanding for so they could say dude i understand you understand me i understand you through this song is that it yes and um that's why he had a special relationship he says kindership with animals oh. um because he with animals they could feel from the, they feel from the heart and they act on the heart and they act on instinct and that's a lot like how he lived his life and how he was who he was. And that's why him and Willie and keep bringing up Kenny again and um, Johnny Cash, like a lot of them actually acted very much on instinct um, and on their intuition, like parts of, well, when they weren't super chemically enhanced. <laughs> <laughs> he uh -oh. goes, but even then, he goes, Willie was even really then, good. Yeah, you can, I'm sorry, I don't know. I can tap into more than you could if you want. I'm just seeing these guys together. Like, he's showing me like these images of them just like hanging out and jamming and just shooting the shit and drinking their, drinking their James, you know, whiskey and just having so much fun. And they just seem like cool cats. Like, oh man, I would totally go with these guys. Oh, <laughs> 
if I were younger. All right. Did you enjoy this is kind of similar uh, two questions? Did you enjoy your life as Wailing Jennings? And then also another person asked, uh, was this a happy life for you? So. He says, sure as hell I did. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, sure as hell. <laughs> Very right, so simple answer there. What did you believe happened when you died? I don't know how to answer. He's telling, he is telling you that exactly what he said before was that he feels like he fell asleep and then he woke up and his dog was over me okay that all right all right uh somebody said uh and had, that's why i was googling here uh because i haven't looked at these at all um where is that uh there's a famous quote you said about garth brooks is it real and here's what i think it is uh garth brooks is as country as shit Back then, it was like, what the fuck is going on? This guy is terrible. This is a country music, Jennings said. I would take that any day now. That means the bar has been lowered so far uh, that we're like, please, I would listen to only Garth Brooks all day if that's what I could get. So I don't know if that... Uh... So let me read. As saving country music once spelled out in detail... Time has been kind kind to the music of Garth Brooks and this change of heart by Waylon's son has played out in the hearts of ma many country fans over time. In fact, when Shooter first spoke on Garth, and, and well, okay, I don't know, but it, uh, another diehard uh, Garth Brooks hater turned apologist. So I guess he hated Garth, didn't look kindly on him, but then changed his mind, I don't know. So what? It seems like it was a lot about. Um, I mean, is that even a real quote of yours? For one, he says the feelings were escalated um, over time because he didn't understand him. Oh. Then, Waylon, who is your favorite country singer today? Or A? I mean, you might probably have many, but today. All right, Waylon. Are you you're on the hot seat genre? right now. Is the twing twangy type? Is it the country rock type? I mean, whatever you, however you want to answer this. He part. likes the kind, he likes, he likes the good old boys that keep it real. He okay. likes the people that are authentic. And I think that was, he, <laughs> he's using the term brookie. He's like, when he's bringing up Garth Brooks, he's like bringing up brookie. Oh, okay. As, as in like uh, brookie over there, like trying to, you know, Hollywood eyes at all. Oh, you know, yeah. um, he's like, oh. So you still like and then he he's bringing up kenny chesney i'm sitting there going don't you bring up oh. kenny chesney oh don't you bring up kenny chesney because <laughs> i love him but he's um bringing up like the big stadium tours that they do oh, and yeah. like um it just doesn't seem like he's the biggest fan about the big like productions oh no I can't imagine. It, it's just not his style Simple and, and so Rucker? do you like Ter darius rucker the um, African American one, uh, country singer. He he's goes, he goes, nah, he's all right. Yeah. He goes, what do you? He goes, what do you want what me to say? To Is there any girls that you like that are country uh, singers? He says he likes that Carrie. Okay, all right, Carrie. Underwood? He says he's, but then he's bringing up how she's all Hollywood too now. Uh, um, so you you like the ones that are simple not co-opted by the big production yes. company he says the only one that's really okay with me about the co-op production he says is dolly she's the only oh, one that's allowed I love dolly he says the only one that's allowed oh she and loretta loretta lynn oh, <laughs> i love dolly so much he says and look at them he says they are beautiful they are well dressed they are well manicured and they got that goddamn beautiful stinging voice <laughs> Who? Who? he's talking oh. about loretta lynn and dolly Parton. oh yeah and then there's the patsy klein he's bringing up too oh, he's bringing up oh, all the big greats about the how Chris women Gale. used to be and how they used to dress in country but yet they were still well okay so apparently he's pretty old school with the way he thinks because he's explaining okay. to me like look they came home and they still cooked good dinner for their husbands and they could still make a mean chicken Oh, I know. Those are the that's what gets days. his heart every time. He says a woman that can, a woman that can sing, a woman that can. Um, my list. Boom, boom, boom. Apparently, he likes women. Want to. <laughs> he loved. He loved women. Just putting that out there. 
God. <laughs> He's bringing up all these different women right now. Oh, okay. So, um, is there anything outside of the country genre that, uh, that you like? Like, I don't know, Billy Holiday, Ella Fisher. I mean, anything outside Bossa Nova, either Pilaf, Pilaf, PF. Yeah. You like he's saying I like that Frank Sinatra. Okay, Frank Sinatra. Okay. Anything else outside of the country music genre that you liked? Yeah, he says he liked him some rock and roll. Okay, <laughs> good. Like classic rock and roll or heavy metal or he's rock actually or... bringing up like um groups like like everything from like the old school Beatles kind of oh, maybe Beatles. not Beatles. Okay, right. right. Not Beatles, but but like, uh, like he liked Paul McCartney, but um, also like newer stuff. Um, oh, he's bringing up more country, like Dirk Bentley. Okay. <laughs> I like the band Perry. I love the band uh, Perry. That uh, song, When I, I Die Young. Oh my God, I listen to that. that I bought me a banjo that I never practiced. And it's a good oh, thing because the dog God. is coming every time I do. <laughs> Elise is playing the banjo. Oh! He doesn't like, okay, so uh, this is not my opinion, people. This is just his, Waylon Jennings. He doesn't like how they changed like a lot of the names, like the Dixie Chicks and Lady oh, Angela, no. yeah. oh, the Lady God. A, and the Dixie Chicks are now the Chicks. Like he doesn't like that. Yeah. Um, he says oh, you're all political. too young. You do not like political correctness, do you, Waylon? No, he likes the old school. He likes it rough. He likes it how it's meant to be. He says you can't erase history, people. You can't erase history. No, we can learn says, from it. So all these you got, he says you got them Yankees down there. That'll always be them Yanks. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's erase. terrible. We have we have a lot of scars in our history. I mean, many from the Trail of Tears to or to the civil aspects of the Civil War, of course. He's but telling, he's once again saying, tell me about it. He's saying, use it as teachable moments to learn from it. You know? Learn. I feel like his family history itself actually must be something pretty interesting because he well, has right. this connection right. to Native American culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm like wondering if it's from a past life. So if it's okay, I'm just asking him right now. Like, is I'm it from ask a past about life? life for sure. He, yeah, he says many, many past lives he's had. Um, he preferred to be a, a Native American culture. That's actually why him and Willie got, like, that was such a kindred ship between them with the whole spirituality thing again. was a, There was a lot of belief systems there that, like, was just a part of him and what he always thought. And then Willie kind of just, like, helped reinforce what he always thought um, to be. And a lot of it's because of past lives that he had many actually with the Native American culture. I, I and I'm asking him like- I'm gonna ask about one later toward the end, but not now. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> uh, okay. Do you think a lot of, I mean, maybe it's ridiculous of me to think that, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the South, I'm a Southerner, but are a lot of country Western singers racist or grapple with bigotry? Or am he I says no more than raps, rap artists. Oh. He's bringing up like Cardi B and that WAP song. And um, he goes, it depends on what you call inappropriate. Um, and once oh, again, you, this is you, not me and Elise's opinion. Oh, I, don't she, she, <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't, you know, I do not read comments. But he's like, you know, you listen to the foundations of rap music and the things they say in it. And the way they talk about women, the way women talk about themselves, he's saying it's disgraceful. And he's bringing up about how, um, you know, it's okay for like, like rap music, like to bring up certain bigotry things. But then like, if you bring it up in a country song, it takes on a totally different like context and how much, you know, how much he doesn't believe that. Okay. Were you racist at all? I mean, you're not now. But. He's not lying. He's saying that he's had his times. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yes. Well, I think it's very common. But why? I hope he's not racist. That, yeah. No. Oh. Okay. He's so, saying it's also a sign of the times, but he also had some really great friends that were of like different cultures and different races. Yeah. He yeah. just like he's bringing up the '60s and '70s and just yeah. where he lived and how things were different. 
the racist facade, like, well, I'm a country singer, I'm a, sa a southerner, so I guess I have to say things like this, but I don't feel them in my heart. No, no, because that that wasn't a part of his music. He didn't need to make oh, that okay. a part of his music. Okay. Didn't, he didn't feel the need to make that a part of who he was. That's unimportant. He, he says if he ever did, it was unintentional. Okay. You think racism in the music industry on all sides is, is part of the plan to teach the collective something? Or is it just an individual, well, he's a racist, she's a racist, whatever thing? Or is it is it a planned teachable moment to the collective? It's a um he says that's an understatement, actually. Okay. He likes <laughs> about it. what you just said. So uh it sounds like it has to do a lot, he says, with generationally. Um how people think and function and how society is. And yeah. then he says, he's bringing up music from the civil war. Yeah. Oh. And he's having me listen to some of the songs right now that the soldiers sang as they were marching and the things that they were saying and, you know, um, how that all comes from the heart and it means something pure. And his music was never about, and that's why he loved country really was because it was about something from the heart and something pure mm -hmm. he says well ultimately it's always about where you came from whether it's country music or rap music and he understands that perspective of it um but he says i don't like how people make a goddamn mess about it all the time just because people are expressing themselves as artists because that's what we are mm -hmm. um he says, you can call it wrong. You can call it right. That's just my dang opinion. <laughs> yeah, well, I honor your opinion. So he says, uh, I'm using these poor ladies here just to bring it out. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're here for, stepping stones. So boxes, we're so, so who did you see when you crossed over? You saw your grandmother, anybody else? That uh, the first couple of people that you saw and, and your dog, of course, who else? He wanted to take a walk. Oh, okay. He says he took a, he's like showing me go on out of the back of this log cabin kind of house, um, down a hill, down to a creek. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he had a brother that passed or maybe a friend that was like a brother yeah. that he met down at this creek. Okay. And he wanted to wash his face. Um, and then he saw Jesus, but right next to Jesus was a Indian on a beautiful paint horse. Oh. And they were standing right next to each other. Mm. And they were looking at him and they were, they, they were just smiling at him and they were just there with him for a minute. And he says, and I looked up and my first thought is, where's my shirt? <laughs> Oh, you lost your shirt. <laughs> maybe they tore it off with CPR. Maybe you just decided to go like Native American, like commando, but from the waist up. He says, and then they just started laughing. I'm like, well, just kind of started laughing. That's and that's when Jesus kind of stepped over the creek and put his arms across his shoulders and said, you don't need that shirt anymore, my brother. Oh. <laughs> you don't need that shirt anymore, brother. You're good. So what did you meet? Have you met Eric in, before today? Because you, we were planning to bring him on, probably. He says, Yeah, I met him. And uh, he's showing me this image. Of Is there one, any help? I'm kidding. <laughs> one night there was, okay, in preparation for this today, um, there was a campfire and they were all sitting around the campfire and they had their guitars out. And El Elvis was there because you're doing that session with Elvis soon, right? Yes. And, um, Elvis was there and he was there and Johnny was there and they all had their guitars out and they were jamming and Eric wanted Eric was there and they were showing him some chords and some things he can do like more with his fingers um yeah Eddie Van Halen was there too but we won't bring that up <laughs> I don't know how you feel about him <laughs> yeah, see on him. all right so um so so many performers of your generation had drug issues from Johnny Cash to Elvis, etc. Can you explain how this plays into the soul journey or soul, or, you know, contract? Well, first off, he's getting really defensive oh. about, and they don't now. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, some do. Oh, 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 I see what you mean. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's been a part of the entertainment industry for a long time. And and maybe he says, so sweetheart, weird. that's just how it was back then. That's yeah. just how it is yeah. now. And that's probably how it's all gonna be. It's all rock and roll, it's all country. How either way you look at it, it's music. Yeah. It helps bring people together. And when be when you bring people together, sometimes they're gonna do bad shit. <laughs> and maybe bring people together it creates stories. Maybe it's about creating stories for songs. Drugs. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. Not he says it's, he he says it's creating a bad habit. Let's just call a spade okay. a spade here. It's yeah, a yeah. bad yeah. habit. Not good. Not good. <laughs> All right. So, um, are you surprised Garth Brooks is so still so famous? I think this person does not like Garth Brooks. Whatever. I know. What does he have against Garth? Oh, God. Yeah. No, he says he wishes that man luck. He says he wishes him luck. He so, wishes him luck. I think he likes him now. But. <laughs> At the he time. says he needed to find his heart. He needed to find where his heart is. He likes his wife. Who's his wife? Is it Martina McBride? I, I can't remember I who's wife. I thought they but. got divorced, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't know. keep up I, with the news. So, uh, <laughs> but did it surprise you when he his fame skyrocketed? Was it what's going on? Was it like that, or is it like oh yeah, I figured that? He did not care. It did, no big deal. All mm -hmm. right. Um, it, did you have any regrets after, you know, when you cross over, did you look back and say, shit, why? This is about some stuff, yeah. Um, but it's, it's about the stuff. important stuff, like um, his kids. Like he's oh, okay. showing me a memory with his son when yeah. he was too tough on him once because he was drunk. Okay. And then he but went away for son. like six the, months. The son or, the, or Waylon? Who was Waylon drunk? to his son. Waylon oh. was drunk. Well, okay, yeah, okay. And he was like, he gave his son a really hard time yeah. and said some real nasty shit to him, he says. And then he went away for like six months on tour. And so on the other side, when he went through his life review, like he was able to see like how that really affected like his son and his whole family. And he, he says, man, that sh he says that shit made me feel like shit, yeah, <laughs> you know, like um he says he knows the bigger he says he says i understand the bigger meaning of it now y'all yeah but that's stuff he's like scratching his chin he's like eh, that stuff still really doesn't make me feel good <laughs> he's not I proud know. of it uh, you he, have he's not know. proud of it um it's all really about misunderstandings he had in relationships with i think that he was married more than once okay um with his wives and how he went too far with things um he feels like he didn't have like he's he's like digging for excuses kind of like maybe I wasn't properly educated I don't know you okay. know um he says really at the time I just didn't give a fuck okay. and but if anything that's what I regret did drugs have anything to do with that he says yeah I'd say so okay all right so what were you here to learn and what were you here to teach uh, i.e I. what is your what was he your says story? he was here to he was here to learn music and he was here to teach life life oh wow through your music he says you live it you'll learn it you have fun and sometimes you die young <laughs> yeah oh wow all right um all right somebody uh, I, I don't understand this quite but um where was this something about me alisa matthews uh what was that? Oh, I've been pushing Dr. Matthews pretty hard to get you. Did you have anything to do with that? Like this guy, I remember, gave me a few questions, but it wasn't enough. So I said, well, let's gather some more, gather some more. And that kind of forgot, you know, and, and then then he came up and said, hey, what's going on, man? So I need more questions. And then here we go. He's, so. he's responding to it as he's appreciating that he could be an, an inspiration. Yeah. So he's not giving me more than that about oh, any of it. Just appreciating that he could be an inspiration for him. Well, like never, he's a pretty humble then. guy. Like he's actually pretty humble. I just want to put that out there. Well, he's not like flashy. He's not showy. His boots are dirty. <laughs> you know, he doesn't, he says half the time, I don't really give a fuck. 
Yeah. He just did what he, he goes, I just did what I did, man. And if you came along, you wanted to join the fun and or you want to join me, join me. If you didn't fuck you too, then well, he's kind of got a dirty mouth, huh? <laughs> Eric goes, my kind of guy. <laughs> really? All right. So, um, this one person, I think this is the person that did most of the questions. I've had a strong push to connect with you, Waylon. Are we connected in some way? I've never had such a strong push to connect with somebody. This he is says we were cowboys, my brother. Oh, cowboys. That's awesome. Uh, save a horse, ride a cowboy. That's what I say. All right. So, um, <laughs> can you share another life as a Native American, perhaps, obviously, that most influenced your one, your latest one, as Waylon Jennings? Yeah. Um, okay. This may not be a popular thing to bring up here, but um, he was actually a woman. Okay. <laughs> not a man okay. in one of his past lives as okay. a uh, Native American. And I actually feel like it was right about the time that the columnists were coming here. Oh. And he was killed young um, and very confused. And this woman was learning um, to be a shaman and she was just learning about her spirituality and how things were affecting her, like sound. Um, the person that was training her was an elder and he was like having her listen to the sound of the woods and the sound of the stream. Um, so that way she could always find her way home mm. and was teaching her about sound healing. Oh. Um, and that's when he realized that he can use instruments as a tool of healing. And then she died. Oh, how did she, she die? Killed. A gun, an arrow, raped and strangled or what? So all I'm seeing is her in a wood, wooded area, like picking berries or something and having this little like bucket. And then she just like falls over so i'm not seeing if she got shot i'm not seeing what she got i feel like she got maybe whacked in the head um a colonist or another native american probably a colonist i feel like it was like a soldier kind of okay all right being was willie nelson in that life maybe he was your teacher i don't know i mean uh did was he a, in that tribe with you so Willie was on the other side of it in that oh, life. Okay. Willie was actually a, um, a Civil War soldier. Wow. Well, did they have lives together as Native Americans, Willie and, and Waylon? Or, um, or did you? I talked to you. You're not sorry. Maybe not Civil War. Sorry, pre-Civil War. Sorry oh. about that. I'm like seeing all these images and I'm just trying oh, to tie the story okay. down. So it's, it's free fine anyway. <laughs> Don't let your time. Get specific. I like to. It makes me feel better. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so were y'all uh, Native Americans together in, in one life or another or more? Um, actually on the other side of it, they they were a uh, lots of times they like to play the like one person is the perpetrator and the other one's the victim oh. they like to do that a lot in different lives but then they also had many lives as brothers okay. so um like actually in the soul family best friend brothers okay. like i'm seeing a scene from like a ship right now that they were out to sea together and and um and then i'm seeing a, a life all the way back like in england <laughs> <laughs> back in like the uh -huh. medieval era um they fought together side by side and they were family they were actual brothers um and then okay so like all over europe um they oh, were in the Russia together thing. at some point mm -hmm. anybody else uh, did anybody else have lives with you garth brooks elvis johnny cash any any of those guys you can say yes or no you don't have to give me the lives he says that actually it's a bigger concept than that um he says there's a train reaction that comes in. Once one of them comes in, they all end up coming in. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So they, they, they unify each other. They, okay. they, 
there's actually um, many past lives that a lot of these guys have had together. They, they were friends. They were like, yeah. they were friends. They're part of each other's soul family. So there's been lifetimes that they've come in at the same time, but not known each other. Mm-hmm. Um, they are, they've come in many times together though. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, okay. Did that, uh, can you tell us something you did? Nobody would know. Like I asked, um, uh, Madame Curie that question and she I just bring this up all the time guys but I don't know else, how else to do it and she sewed a little teddy bear inside one of her skirts okay so is there anything that that's kind of cute and fun that nobody knows about you waiting he liked to keep his feet really clean oh like he actually was a little bit of a neat freak oh cool um he was really he liked to have things in its place he wasn't he wasn't messy okay he was kind of an ocd except for your boots but your feet are clean he's actually he liked to take a shower a little camaro on them boots okay so um whose boots have you been who's bad have you been been? okay i'll stop okay uh sad okay sad 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 okay so anything any other advice to your fan anything you else you want to say to your fans your to your family and then also any advice to humanity just those two well, first off he's telling his kids that he loves them mm. he says you know i love you yeah you know i always will that's all i gotta say about that yeah he's actually asking for a little forgiveness too oh. um he says to my ex-wives i loved you all the best i could and you know it maybe at different times (laughs) yeah and then he's bringing up to his fans or just humanity in general he says live it and live it good live it full because you never know when the time's coming that storm's always rolling yeah he goes just like my buddy garth book says I don't know that one. I think I do. Wait, rolling. Something about rolling. Okay, what? Thunder I'll... rolls. You don't know that. You don't know that. Oh song? yeah, now I remember. I remember. Oh god. I he's just... saying he stole I that from that him. For me. <laughs> I don't okay. know if he's kidding or if he actually stole that. He probably just joking around, but <laughs> no, I remember that. I know the song. Actually, believe it or not, I heard <laughs> every song. He will. He will have a contest with the other kids, like radio. What's that? Man, you will know right away. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> anything else? Uh, you want to ask him anything, uh, Abby? Eric, would you like to ask Waylon anything? Or Waylon, is there anything else you'd like to say before you, before we close? Every time I look at him, like I just like get all shy because he's just so cute. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Is he showing him? Are you showing yourself younger than when you passed? He says thirty six. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Well, I guess we'll close and. You need to share yourself with the world, Abby. (laughs) Go ahead. You say it. Uh, Brightsidemedium.com or you can find me on Facebook. (laughs) Brightsidemedium.com. And she's going to start helping me out with yes or no questions for Atlanta Scalar since I don't do that anymore. So uh, stay tuned for that. And also go to atlantiscalar.com. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Eric says, bye, mom. I love you. I, I love you too. Bye. <laughs> because there she is. She's not letting me get an ed- word in edgewise again. <laughs> oh,